What's up my friends? How's it going today? This will be one of my off-the-cuff videos, I guess. Um, you know, I wanted to talk a little bit about dreams and nightmares, which I don't have many nightmares, but uh, I had one the other night I wanted to share with you, and uh, I decided to sit down and record before I forget it. You know, I actually <laughs> wanted to say first, it's YouTube over the years, I I was just thinking about how I've learned so much through my experiences, like discussing my life and my ideas with other people. Uh, I always enjoyed the, the learning curve of, you know, making claims that maybe other people didn't agree with, or uh, having discussions that somebody disagreed with, or whatever it might be. And, and learning, as much as I realized I've learned about other people, which was something after a few years I realized, wow, you know, thousands of videos, hundreds of thousands of discussions it seems like and I've learned so much about basic human interest and behavior and what's important to us through the lens of so many different people but I've learned so much about myself you know what bothers me what triggered me in the past and the things that set me off or maybe that I disagree with and maybe I'm wrong in a lot of ways in fact I've changed a few of my you know beliefs not beliefs, but I guess the way I saw the world, you know, recently, it's just a constant morphing of ideas to say you have to be honest with yourself and honest with the situation. And we're constantly turning down signals that something's going wrong or that we're not uh, living up to our full potential, whatever it might be. So anyhow, you know, being a human is a weird thing. And I'm just really grateful for all the, I guess, YouTube, these discussions I've had had have given me so much more insight into being alive and myself than I thought it would. And that's why I wanted to talk about dreams. Because YouTube or the internet, on the level, it's very surface and shallow in a way. You know, it's a one-sided discussion. A person says what they want, somebody else responds. It's nothing compared to the face-to-face -face discussion we can have with others. However, the fact that we can meet so many similar people that are split up so far away means that even though talking online isn't doesn't have the same value perhaps as a face-to-face -face conversation the value of the conversations you have are much higher than talking to people like that may be local you know whether it be at the bar or at a school wherever you meet people and it's really hard to meet people that you want to talk to you might have a friend that you can discuss things with but if you really want to express yourself um, you do it online because that's where everybody is, right? Well, learning about ourselves, it's very difficult in our day-to-day -day life because we're only getting half the story. We don't know the depths of what's going on in other lands, other places, other people's minds. But when it comes to dreams, there's something there that it's been really hard to define. Over the years, I... I used to be really into dreaming. Okay, let me put it this way. I read Carlos Castaneda, The Art of Dreaming, and it set me off on this tangent about, you know, uh, lucid dreaming and, and bonding with, you know, other spirit guides and all these things. I was really into this kind of new age but old age thing. Uh, this idea that dreams were a connection to this other realm where you could understand things. And to a degree, I still believe that. Except for the realm is deep within our subconscious. It's almost like tapping into our signal of awareness and relationship to the world. And these metaphors come forth. And for each person, dreams are so unique. Trying to define a dream is nearly impossible. Everyone knows that. Uh, it's So imagine the fact that even though you're describing it and somebody's like, oh, that's weird, they still have no idea what it was really like. And there's more to a dream. It's a feeling. Because you're in a situation that you might actually feel like you're in, and I say might because there's another side to dreaming, which is lucid dreaming. Now, after I got into uh, dreaming, <laughs> I bought a book called uh, Creative Dreaming. I think it was Lucinda Ball, if I'm not mistaken. It was about that thick. And it had a lot of hokey random shit in it, but there was a bunch of interesting ideas about how to lucid dream how to program yourself by looking at your hand throughout the day so you remind yourself in your dream that you're dreaming 
and don't freak out in your dream to wake up. Because I've had lots of lucid dreams where I realized I was dreaming and then woke right up. Whoa. Um, you learn to control that by being aware of it. And I'm telling you, lucid dreaming is one of the craziest things I've experienced. I mean, I was learning to fly in my dreams. I would kind of coast to the ground, and then I'd learn to fly higher and higher. And one time I was in this prison, and I just shot way up into the air and landed outside the prison, and I was yelling at the guards to leave the other dudes alone. And it's this empowering feeling when you can fly in a dream, right? At a point, and this was around 2010, 11, 12, I don't know, uh, at a point, I just said, you know, I feel like I'm blocking my natural brain's tendency to want to dream. In other words, if I'm creating and manifesting a dream, it's a completely different type of dream. When you wake up in a dream, you see things completely differently. And it is the weirdness of a dream that allows you to figure out what's going on in your subconscious. And uh, there's a lot of Freudian type, you know, uh, psychological theories on dreams and tell me about your mother, and uh, a lot of this is just hogwash, especially dream. If you go to, if you Google anything, you know, I dreamed about a tidal wave, as I did the other day, you'll probably come up with a plethora of websites telling you exactly what your dream meant, and I'll tell you that's bullshit. You have to decipher it within your own mind, use common sense, but some of the metaphors can be relatable. So anyhow, Dreaming is an amazing way to get in touch with our own brains, but what does that mean, and, and, and what's my point? I don't know. I'm just talking about dreaming. <laughs> but I wanted to share my dream before I forget, I guess. So I was going to title this uh, something along the lines of, like, fire trucks and tidal waves. Um, when I was younger, about five years old, six, seven, I had a recurring dream. And I don't know how many times I had it, but it was at least several. The first time I had it, and at the time I was living in Milwaukee, Oregon, on a place called Oatfield Street, and we had this big picture window in the living room. So I remember in the dream, I heard a fire truck coming, coming up the road, and so I ran to my front window and I, I was looking out all excited to watch it pass. And the fire truck, lo and behold, saw me, I guess, turned into the yard, plowed up through my front yard, which was a pretty big yard, and crashed through my front uh, window and just push, and then I woke up. And I think this happened a couple times. So I had the dream again. But this time, when I heard it in my dream, I was aware and I remembered. And I said, no, 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 I'm hiding. So I ducked down under the window until the fire truck had passed. And once I did that, I never had the dream again. Uh, many, many years passed, and I started having some interesting dreams in my older, you know, my, my uh, late 20s and 30s. I started documenting them. I have two, like, recorders. I, back then it was all I had was a little voice recorder. I'd wake up, record my thoughts and my dreams before I actually got up. Because you don't, people who say, oh, I don't dream or I don't remember my dreams, that's just because you don't want to. If you start getting into a cycle of trying, your brain is programmed to remember. I mean, we can do anything we put our mind to. Uh, but there is another method to it, especially lucid dreaming, where you'll wake up at like five in the morning and after your like third REM cycle, and then you will wake up for half an hour, read about lucid dreaming, and then go right back to bed. And in that next hour and a half, you'll have some of the craziest dreams you've had. And that's why when we're dozing or taking naps, they can be quite vivid. Um, but the dream world's not understood. I'm not sitting here saying there's some spiritual significance. But what is spiritual? It's getting to know your own self, your inner psyche, and your connection to the universe. So in a way, <clears throat> understanding your dreams means understanding yourself. To an extent, okay? <laughs> a lot of dreams are just gibberish, but I could sit here and probably talk for an hour about all the crazy dreams I've had and uh, go through all my recordings and whatnot, but I don't want to do that. I just want to tell you about one dream I had the other night, which was really interesting. Uh, I was in this large house, which I dream about regularly, two things. Uh, festivals, or and my being at my bus in festivals, my school bus, because, yeah. Uh, and... Uh, it's usually being in large abandoned houses, and often it's this place called the Moore House. It was a carpentry job I worked on back in the 2000s for like two years. It was a lakeside house that we remodeled, did a whole curved staircase and all this custom woodwork, and so it just sticks out in my mind. And I was there with my family, and all of a sudden I was looking out the front window and I saw water just rush past. Uh, and I was like, oh shit, and then I heard, we felt the whole house shake, and it was just a boom! And then water just went crazy around the house. 
And I turned and there was this huge picture windows, all these designed windows, and I could see water falling back like a giant wave had hit it, and it was receding back. And I was like, my first thought in the dream, and this is messed up, where's my camera? I gotta get my camera. So I, the wave was receding back to the ocean. I ran out with my oldest son, and I was like, he went to grab Debbie's camera, which is my wife's sister, and I went to look for mine, and it was hanging off a cliff that the water had pulled all the soil back. And I looked down the hill at that point, and it was like, it felt like I was in north, central northern California. It was, the hill looked like that kind of like rippled desert look to it with sparse trees. And the water had receded way back out. And it was, you could see the bottom of the ocean where it usually is. And it was going way out, like a couple miles. And you knew it was going to come rushing back in. And it was just the first of many tsunamis, right? So I... Uh, needlessly to say panicked it's like let's get the hell out of here and I went back into the house I said well what should we do if we run up here we're just gonna get hit anyway I guess if we survived the last one maybe we should just sit here and wait and then I woke up and that was a crazy dream you know uh, it was pretty intense because when I woke up I was short of breath and I was a little bit sweaty and stressed and it's the first time I've had a dream like that in several years. Say once a decade, maybe I wake up from a nightmare, like with a start. Um, and I know that nightmares are related to when you feel out of control in a part of your life. Almost always, anyone I've talked to who's having nightmares almost always has some issue going on with their life. And how can you not? I mean, why else would your brain do that? It's not like a, a fluke. I mean, your brain's trying to tell you something, and a lot of people won't listen, and they ignore it, and they push it down. So usually my dreams are weird, but pleasant. It's usually being lost in large, awkward houses, going through weird passageways, being at a festival where you're trying to get through a bunch of people, or uh, you're, you're in a bus that's parked in a house, or... I don't know why I dream about my school bus so much, but um, I think I do. I think it's because the time I feel the most free in my life, is when I'm in my bus with my wife traveling to concerts and festivals in the summer. And uh, it's winter now, so I, I, <laughs> I can't wait for that season to come back. Uh, so anyhow, that's just my talk on, on, on dreams. I, I don't know what else to say. Uh, they're fascinating. I mean, a lot of people really don't want to talk about their dreams because I know, I know very rationally minded people who have nightmares. And so therefore, they don't like talking about that kind of shit because they know it'll compound and cause them more nightmares. I guess my message, if anything here, would be for those who do have nightmares, to take it as kind of a wake-up sign and ask yourself what it is that you're losing control of in your life. Because often it's just all in here. It's not really out there. It almost always is. But uh, for me in my situation, I feel, um, I don't know, who knows the reasons why I'm having dreams of tidal waves hitting. I thought it might be because of the loss that we recently had, because I was standing there with the whole family, as well as uh, my niece's mom, who uh, it felt like it was the impact of a loss and the, the helplessness you feel from that. So, um, yeah, you can translate your dreams, but you have to be aware that you're not always going to be able to properly <laughs> gauge any meaning from it. Some dreams are just weird dreams. And there are different dreams in deep sleep and in light sleep. My favorite dreams are the ones where you are in a state of, uh, well, you're awake, but you're laying there and you're kind of half dozing. Um, it's like the twilight kind of sleep. And uh, um, for some reason right now, I'm having a brain fart and I can't think of the name for it, but I'm sure it'll come to me. Uh, but you're, yeah, yeah you're, you're dozing in and out, and it's almost like a wakeful, dreamy, like, uh, psychedelic-like sleep, which can be brought on by substances, but it can occur naturally, too, in certain states. Um, oh God, what is it? What is it? What is it? Hypnogogia. Thank you. Hypnogogia. <laughs> Just like it sounds. Um, and it's this hypnagogic state where you're, ha you're having waking dreams, and I'll just say on a last note, it can lead to some very scary situations because it's very similar to sleep paralysis, which is where you're half asleep, half awake, and you're having nightmares, but you're awake and you're convinced that it's real. And this is where the idea of the succubus comes from. And the succubus was a woman who would sit on you and molest men at night and they couldn't move. And it was demonic. For some people, it was just a demon or an evil spirit. 
Uh, being pinned to your bed by a needle spirit is the same story that gave rise to the alien abduction story. And so if anybody's an alien abduction believer, I, hey, I'm not saying that nobody's been abducted. Maybe it's true. But most of the stories can often be, uh, or can be from people, I should say, that have had these states of waking dreams, but they're so realistic, you believe that they're happening. And I've had one. And uh, to be quite honest, it was taking, and uh, I had extreme, extreme back pain. And I had nothing to take for it. And I was going camping with my family. I couldn't do anything. I couldn't even stand. My buddy gave me a Subutex, or a Suboxone, which I talked about in my last video. And I, at the time, I didn't know shit about him. I took like a quarter of one, and I was just like out of it. Like it was an opioid psychedelic thing. And I, I went into this half dream state. Um, it was it, it was unpleasant for a moment, because I didn't realize I was dreaming. I was just staring into the trees from my camp chair. Um, but that's the only time I remember being stuck in a waking dream, and it was very brief. But some people have it all the time. Like my wife's uh, nephew, he uh, he used to have those where he'd be half awake, half asleep, and have waking dreams, and that's scary. It's scary. So anyhow, it's just a ramble on dreams. Nothing special. Uh, let me know what you guys think about dreams, because honestly, it's one of those things that's really hard to define, but it's a huge part of our life. I mean, think about this. As much as we know and study whatever we're into in our waking life, we spend more time asleep than doing most other things, a third of our life. And in that time, we do a lot of dreaming. So my goal for when I was uh, trying to lucid dream was to make the most of that time. I'm like, if I'm already going to be asleep, why not use that time to like go do something fun, build houses in my dreams and... Uh, you know, go flying. I mean, why not? Why let the dreams control me? But like I said, I let it go because I wanted my brain, brain to do its own work. And I realized I, dreaming was kind of a crutch for me. I was actually enjoying it more than being awake, and that's scary. Uh, maybe not more than being awake, but uh, it was like, oh, I can't wait for lucid dreaming. It's, I guess there's nothing wrong with that so much, but you can see how it could be an attractive uh, time time sink, but I guess I'm already asleep, right? Anyway, those are my thoughts on dreams. I'll talk to y'all later. Thanks for listening. Thanks to my sub supporters, my subscribers, my commenters, my patrons on Patreon and all that great stuff, and I will talk to you soon. Be well. Enjoy your day.